Hello, this is Cedric Green. Today is April the 5th, Monday. Here's the time of the day and the temperature inside the garage, as you can see. I went to this electronic store I usually go to all the time. It's called uh, EPO, as you can see, Electronic Parts Outlet. And I picked up some good items. I'm I'm finna get ready to add some, a few things. And there are, there's the fan. It's a 24 volt fan. I'm gonna add that right here. So I can keep these breakers, both the breakers and switch cool. Cause this general area right here is the main hot spot. It gets real hot right here when you, I'm using heavy loads, especially when I'm using the central AC, you know. From my previous videos, you can go back to the link up here and watch, all right? <laughs> and also pick up these two push buttons. They both are push on and off operation. The push on the off operation button. I am think I'm gonna choose this button right here i also got this resistor right here as you can see here's the uh it's 100 ohms 10 percent and 10 watts it's used to charge and discharge this big bar right here and the capacitors inside the inverter itself because i kind of notice when i'm turning on this power switch with the batteries on you see a spark inside a spark be occurring inside this. You can see it. And what that would be burning out these breakers and stuff if people use these to turn on the inverter power. It's supposed to use a switch right here to turn on the inverter. And this is just and this just to protect the circuit, you know. Notice I got right here. This is an automatic circuit breaker right here. And this is my main breaker right here. And this is my bypass breaker right here but i must mostly use this one though because it, it, it shuts off and about a minute or so it shuts back on you know and this breaker definitely be getting hot over 170 something degrees you know but it, it does not trip yet though you know and they both are 300 amp breakers as you can see the main reason why i got this Resistor right here to charge and discharge the inverter and this capacitor right here safely, you know. And of course, I'm gonna install this fan. I might hook another switch to this so I can just turn it on when I need it. When the, when this area starts getting hot again, also. I installed these two extra little bus bars right here on the side of these. These big bus bars because they, these are already full. And I can keep these covered and all that and use these as external input and output power source. This is my new addition right here. I added up here. My three phase meter for my wind turbine as you can see. You can go up here too and look at the uh, video or so. I've been doing quite many little projects to this power wall. Here's my lithium battery right here. And I'm still planning to get some more, but they are so expensive, you know. All right, now for we get ready to install these little components and, uh, and hope for the best. Okay, I'm gonna stop with this resistor first. Install this with this button right here. And this is the wire I'm gonna use right here. And I'm gonna come from right here on up to the switch, a button. And then the resistor and over into here. So I got to probably take this off, you know. 
finna begin. Okay, I got my bus bar uncovered. Now I'ma put it right here. Right the school, school, school's in right here, like these right here. And these are the wire connect, uh, terminal connectors I got right here. This is the screw that came out the hole of the bus bar. I might use this one because I need to make sure that it, I'm getting enough current through there to go through this resistor and the switch before it goes into this portion of it to charge the capacitors. Right now I got my wire stripping pliers right here. It's the good kind. You get it from Home Depot. Now I'm gonna strip one in at this wire, as you can see. Here we go. Just like that. Perfect strip in to go into one of these and crimp it. All right, I have the red wire inside one of the lugs and uh, using just regular pliers to kind of crimp it, as you can see. Gonna focus, all right? I just squeeze. All right, I'm, I have it nicely crimped, as you can see. Look at that, and this goes over it. I might just probably put tape over it, but I think th I'll keep this right here. So, on to the next segment. All right, I'm screwing the wire in. I'm trying to do this safely because the current is still on charging my batteries. As you can see, here we go. Okay, miss. All right, now I'm making the measurements. I'm gonna put the resistor on the right here, either with the resistor or the push button right here. I might just put the push button right here. This is where I'm going to cut the wire. You can see. Here we go. Found some tiny bitty connectors that will plug into the switch, and I just crimp the wires on these and all that, as you can see, and then put in the circuit at the end of the strip wire pimped in to complete the circuit. And crimp it right here, and so I'm gonna do the other. Uh, lug, plug in lugs on the other side of the switch and continue, continue with the circuit. I'll bring it right up here. I'm going to take this off. But right now, I got it turned off because my charge I use these sometimes to strip the wire, but these here, these do better much faster. I can just, you know, I just continue using these to get cut faster. I'm gonna strip this end off right here. This is where the resistor is gonna be connected to right here on this end. And the other end of the, that wire I just showed it just stripped off right here. All right. In between. I'm going up around if I have enough to connect over here. If I have enough wire, you know, in space. Alright, just a safety precaution, I just wrap the ends and 
and tape as you can see electrical black tape this uh, kind of tape that resists some heat all right I'm taking off the inverter disconnect switch right here I come from the circuit breaker to the inverter as you can see so I can get to the connections in the back so I can Put this other end right here in there somewhere, you know. <laughs> Pull this out. Yeah, I'm about to connect it to this terminal right here. This terminal. Alright, I found the right lug for this wire. As you can see, I'm going to get ready to crimp it. And this will go perfectly on this terminal right here as you can see so let me start crimping crimp this and then this side there we go tight fit <laughs> Okay, let's connect it. I'm looking through my box of bolts, looking for a nut that will fit right here. It's perfect size to put this lug on. All right, let's do it. Well, I got the got the inverter power switch back on the wall, and see it got it coming out right here through the resistor, through the switch, into the bus bar. We're gonna make the connections, and I need to find some kind of deal to hold this against the wall and hold the switch up so I can push it. You know. All right, from give it to check for continuity and arms. See if I'm this switch is operating like it's supposed to. As I put this in in here, and I touch this in at the top up here where the it's connected in the power switch. Now if we push the button and. Oh yeah, it's working. As you can see, it's working. All right, I'm using one of these to hold the resistor on the wall. It's to pack this in. As you can see, the heavy duty wall holding pumps. And I have it on the resistor and put it on the wall. There you go, against the wall. And now I need to find something to hold this, this switch up so I can be pushing it, just like that. All right, I found this piece right here. It's pretty unique, but this is a light bulb uh, socket holder for a small lamp I'm gonna use to Put the switch in, as you can see, like that. Well, I got to widen the hole. So with my drill, I'm gonna widen the hole. As you can see. So here we go. Here you go. I'll widen up and the button's in there. I can push it, no problem. All I gotta do just kind of bend this a little and then attach it on the wall. All right, here it is. Have to find a second piece like this, uh, a lamp bulb socket holder, so I can put the switch on, so it won't be bending. If I have to use this, I'm gonna use one, so the two will be more stable. And we're gonna put this on the wall, and it's gonna call it the end of the installation.
There it is, installed in the wall. I can just push it to charge the capacitors before turn on the inverter power switch and push it again to discharge capacitors when I turn off the inverter to deplete all the charger left in the capacitors in the in the inverter and in this cap right here divided be popping and stuff and it stop all that fog from coming out the top of this switch too when I turn the inverter on and stuff and you usually see some sparks coming out of it that's what be messing up the circuit breakers and stuff when you flip it up when you use these to turn on them the power of the inverter and just install one of these right here with a resistor that will charge the capacitors in the inverter first and then turn it on there you go <laughs> we finish running the inverter just turn it off and push this again hold it and discharge the capacitors might have to watch the meters and see the voltage go down until the meter completely turned off and the capacitors are discharged safely without any damage or nothing so this is it right here fellas and we're gonna try it out and see how she works all right i got the the cap charging switch and the resistor installed as you can see oh man look at that look at that look at that all right i'm gonna demonstrate how to use this charging mechanism right here to charge the capacitors before you turn on the inverter before so it won't uh be creating any sparks in your switches and and be damaging them so uh so all i do is turn on the battery 26.1 volts from the battery bank hold this button in when i hold it in the capacitor is going to start charging and this is going to light up you can see the voltage raising up you know so here we go I think I can release it right now. Now the caps are charged and I can turn on the power switch for the inverter. No spark. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And this is the procedure you go through to turn off the inverter and discharge the capacitors. Let's turn it off right here. And turn the power switch off for the, for the inverter and the battery bank. Notice now you got still have a charge in the capacitors in the in the inverter and in this cap right here. That's when this come in. Let's hold and press the button. There you go. The capacitors are now safely discharged though. But I need a much better value resistor right here that will charge up and discharge quite fast by less than a minute or so all right so that's the process instead of just touching resistor on the inverter just build something like this to do it by pressing the button though thanks everybody for watching and see you in the next video sayonara